Oh, hey guys. Oh. Okay. Oh, oops. What up, Video 4 Nation? I'm Magic Bard, and for today we're going to be going through this big man effect really by using perspective to create movie magic. And I'm hoping that this really gives you the fundament fundamentals for creating some really cool movie magic tricks. It was inspired by the Kevin Perry Instagram video where, actually, I think he probably posted on Vine beforehand, but it's really all about using objects in the foreground, interacting with objects, and then kind of, sorry, that was my dog, to make it look like your perspective is being distorted. So, without further ado, I want to give a few shout outs to Bebek, Akze, and Hachimi. Hachimi. I think that's how you say it. I, I can't say the first name, so I just went straight to the last. Sorry, bud. I really appreciate the love. But if you guys are new to Video 4, definitely hit that subscribe button and hit the little bell icon right next to it, so that way you'll be notified every time we post a new tutorial every single week. With that being said, let's jump into the tutorial. All right, guys, so first things first, I wanna show you how I layered it, and then we'll get into a step-by-step -step tutorial and kind of go from the beginning but first I want to show you you know how it's done really quickly and basically it's it's fairly simple so you have your background layer and what I did with that is let me just pause this for a second it's uh, it's frozen okay so I just went to um, time remapped I froze that I added a TV screen onto here to give it some movement and then I have two clips of me all right and that is just the one of me in front of this counter and then this clip is me going behind the counter okay and you can see the masks that I created there and then on top of me I have the mask for the chair so that's right here and then I also have the mask of this fan up here so that when I walk behind everything, I am also behind this. So it just adds some depth to it, right? If you have elements in the foreground that you can walk behind, it'll really add to the effect. And then also reflections add as well. So you can see right here, I did a reflection of my head and very subtle, you know, you don't have to go real far into it but you know I just flip my head around put on on top of here and then uh, turn down the opacity a bit added a little fast blur and you've got a reflection and then of course when I grab the cup and take it away I deleted the mask from the fan because I just wanted my hand to go over that and then just left the chair in there all right, so let's do a uh, let's start this from the beginning and see what we can do. So I have my two clips, right? So I have my background clip right here, and then the clip, or the, actually this is me right here, and the background clip. So I'm just gonna drag this into a new composition, and I'll show you kind of how I set this up. So very close to the camera, I set one of these chairs right here, and then that's where I set my coffee cup. So I'm going to trim this down to the beginning of where I want this clip to start I walk into the scene and then as you see I put my coffee cup right on this chair so that's the real trick to this whole thing is you're gonna want to have a small little table or stool or whatever it is um, to set your cup or prop on whatever you end up doing you know you don't have to do the exact same thing I did but you know playing around with perspective you can probably come up with something else and then what I did was I pretended like I was looking at the fan even though I wasn't and walked right by it right and then I knew right as I passed this part I would be gone so then I kinda got up and then I grabbed the cup brought it out and that's the trick right there so let's uh, let's cut this down to here and then drag it to the beginning 
And cool, so now we've got me in there. Let's also drag our background layer, so just drop that down to the bottom, and then I'll just solo it so I can see it for now. And then what I'll do just to make things easy on me is just freeze it. So I'll right click, time, and freeze frame. Um, you guys don't have to do this part, I'm just doing this right now um, to make things easier in terms of reflections and that kind of stuff that I just don't want to deal with right now. So what I'm going to do next is start my masking. Okay, so I'm going to, with my layer selected, and I'll just call this Max, okay, which is me, and then we'll call this one Background. So with my layer selected, let's start to mask this out. So take the pen tool and mask out the parts that you're supposed to be behind. Alright cool, so once you've created your mask just make sure that it's showing you so what I'm gonna do is open up my mask and go to subtract so there I am very cool and now I walk into the scene right here set down my coffee cup right on the table and there you go it looks like it's right on the table and how you can do that is, you know, when you set up your, um, let's see, let me show you. When you set up your debt, your stool or table or chair, whatever it is, just try to get as close to whatever you're putting your prop on as possible. And that's how you do that. So, so we've got that. Now what I want to do is split the layer right before my knee, arm, or foot touches this side of the counter. So right about here, I'm gonna split my layer. So Command, Shift, D, and then we're gonna add another mask, which will be this one right here. So let's just zoom in here and add another subtraction mask. So I'm just gonna go right here and go right up the line. Okay, great, and then remember to also make that go to subtract on your mask, on that mask we just created, so that way when I walk behind it, it is subtracting that part of the frame. Okay, cool, so now we've got that. We're making ways, we're making ways. Um, now what we want to do is, you know, we'll do this fan right now. So let's, uh, let's add the fan in there and really any elements on your scene that you want in the foreground is what you're going to start to add to the scene. So let me just, I'm just going to hit N right here and trim my comp to the work area so I can see exactly what we're working with. And then what I'm going to do is duplicate this background. So Command D, bring it to the top and now on this layer, on this top layer, you can start to cut out what you want to be in the foreground. So first off, we're going to need this chair as you saw. So just the backing of it. So I'm going to go right here. Okay, and then what you can do is really cut this clip up to where it makes sense because I do not need a fan cut out let's see until about here so I'm just going to command shift D and split that and then I'll go right about here another command shift D and then this layer right here will be my chair and fan cut out. This one will just be my chair cut out. And then the top one will only be my chair cut out as well. So let's uh, let's fix this fan one. Okay, so now we've got our fan cutouts, we've got our chair cutouts. And now what we want to do is, let's see, I grab the coffee 
and the coffee goes in front of the fan as I like it. If you want the coffee to go behind the fan, all you have to do is just stretch this clip out and that way the coffee when you pick it up will go behind the fan. But I would rather have it in front. Okay, so now that you have that, next step is to add a little reflection. And you can really do these all over the place. Um, what I would really recommend is getting a real reflection. So shooting another clip of your head very close to this, um, you know, aluminum silver reflect reflecting device, and uh, you can get a serious reflection. But if you do not have that, then you can create a fake one like the one we will do here. So all you have to do is take your layer, um, take your actor layer or my layer and find out where the reflection will happen so probably at about it'll start around here so I can just um, first I'll duplicate it and then bring it to the top and then we'll call this reflection reflection head um, I'm just gonna recolor this as well so let's see the reflection will probably start right here so let's trim it to there and then it'll end right about there and then really all you have to do is now mask the head so I'm going to hit the M button and just delete all the masks that are on it right now so I can just have one clean mask of my head and pen tool it and just kind of you know do a rough little rough mask of your head really not you don't have to be super specific on this and cool so we've got that and what I would do is keyframe that so open up your mask parameters so we can see the mask path hit that keyframe button and then frame by frame you can kinda keyframe it in there so you know frame and you can go up and down by using the er, page up and page down button on your keyboard to move one frame at a time and then just really start to keyframe this okay so once you keyframed your mask in there the next step is to add a couple effects to it so go to your effects and presets panel and type in flip okay and we'll flip this one upside down and what we will also do is make it a 3D layer and kind of put it into position up here. So let's kind of drag it up there and maybe a little more. Let me kind of zoom out so I can see this. And then I will rotate it a bit so rotate it on the x-axis and I did that by pressing the W key that's my keyboard shortcut for the rotation tool so I'll rotate it a bit like this and let's see how that moves up there so it moves and remember we're only gonna see the reflection on that fan area so okay that looks good that looks good like that Okay, cool, and that's really all we need is just a little bit of reflection, and then you can really move this around to perfect it, but I want to move this forward, so let's add another effect called the wave, wave warp. Drag that onto there. Um, wave type, sign looks good. Uh, kind of warp it up, and you know, you can really leave these settings. Actually, wave speed, I'll just put it down to zero because I don't really want it to move as much. Um, and we walk through here cool now let's add another effect called curves and darken it up just a tad not too much okay that's probably fine for now and um, now what I want to do is precompose this so layer precompose move all attributes make sure you hit that one right there adjust comp duration and the time span and select the layer okay okay cool so we've got that and 
we are going to now mask this to the fan. So hit the pen tool right up here and just mask right around your area that you want this reflection to happen. So I'm just doing a rough kind of selection right here. And then what we will also do is hit MM and let's feather it maybe eight pixels. Okay, so now what should happen is the head, there you, there you see it, starts to do our reflection. So another thing we can also add to this is a fast blur. So type in fast and there it is, legacy fast blur. Um, turn it up, maybe to 10. And then let's turn down the opacity as well. So maybe 80%. Okay, kind of ghosting in there. Um, I'm going to open up the mast expansion and maybe turn it down. Let's see. So about right there. And what you can even do is go to your mode and maybe put it on add and see what that looks like. Uh, that's too much. Uh, multiply maybe. Nope, definitely not that. Overlay. Could work. So really play with your modes to see what matches your reflection device that you are using. Now once you get that all settled with, you've pretty much got your effect all figured out, right? So you walk into the scene, and it's always good when you're doing these optical illusion things to try to do as many interactions with it as possible. So you see me walking way out here, up front to the camera, and then interacting with the subject like this. So it's a lot better to do something like that as opposed to if you start off way up close to the camera like this. So let's try this. Once you're done doing your little edit right here, we're going to pre-compose this whole thing. So let's see if we can see it all. Um, select it all. So you can hit Control or Command A to select everything. Then go to Layer Pre-Compose. Okay, and we'll call this the edited version. And then what we want to do is maybe scale it up so maybe scale it up to 110 because what we're going to do is at or actually 105 is we're going to add a little wiggle to it so press P for your position hold down the alt key and click on that keyframe stopwatch and then we're going to type in an expression called wiggle parentheses so um, do 1 comma maybe 10 so what that means is the position will wiggle one times a second for 10 pixels. Okay, so this one is your how many times a second it'll wiggle, and this one is how many pixels it will move. So hit enter, and let's play it back and see what we've got. Okay, so you can kind of see that wiggle happening as if it looks like someone's holding it. Um, and when you're doing these optical illusions, it's always good to try to make it look like it is not on a tripod, right? So adding this little wiggle effect will help that as well. Another thing you can also do is add a null object, connect this layer to the null, and then move your null around and act as if you have a virtual camera moving around the scene. So other than that, that is how you do the big man effect in After Effects. All right, guys, I hope that last tutorial helped you out. If it did, leave us a comment. Let us know if there are any new visual effects you guys would like to learn, any types of Instagram, movie magic tricks, a little perspective stuff like this. Let us know in the tutorials. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, I need water. But um, yeah, guys, if you liked it, please leave us a like. With that being said, this is Video Ford. I'm Magic Bard, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Oh, my God.